Hello and welcome. Um, this is a chat to the professional, the show that has been designed to X-ray the activities of professional individuals and corporate bodies. My name is Martin Subu and I'm sure glad to be with you. This week we are reaching you from uh, Maryland in the United States of America. We have another distinguished Nigerian, someone who has paid his dues as a medical practitioner. Of course, he did over 10 years, I think about 14 years in Nigeria before migrating to the United States. And counting, he has done about 22 years uh, as a practicing medical doctor in the United States. Of course, he has uh, some clinics that he established. You're still watching the show chat to the professional, the show that has been designed to X-ray the activities of professional individuals and corporate bodies. Like I mentioned in my opening, we are having one of Nigeria's best brands abroad. We are talking about uh, what they will call in the United States of America internal medicine physician, of course, attending uh, physician. Uh, he is the president and medical director, Edge Medical Care, uh, located in Maryland, of course, um, a couple of clinics. But he is a Nigerian trained medical doctor, and that's the most important aspect of it. Uh, Dr. George Ego Oswala has been in the United States of America for so many years. But join me now as I welcome to the show Dr. Uh, George Ego Oswala. You're welcome. Thank you so very much. Well, like I said in my um, introduction, you are a Nigerian trained medical doctor and you are practicing in the United States of America. You are not just practicing, you actually established some medical centers and that essentially is what makes me in particular proud of you as a Nigerian trained professional practicing abroad over 22 years in America practicing as a medical doctor. How do you relate your experience? Well, it's um, that's a broad-based question relating my experience. Professionally. Professionally. There's uh, a chasm, should I say, between practicing here and practicing mm. in Nigeria. Mm. Because the style of practice out here is different from the style of practice in Nigeria. Okay. And um, over the years, and uh, in addition to the training I got here, I would say at times I begin to wonder how I was able to, how my patient survived when I was in Nigeria. <laughs> I saw myself a superstar because I practiced for 14 years there before coming out here. Wow. And then um, when I look back at certain things I did at that time, I was start laughing at myself. What mm. was I actually doing? What was going through my head? Well, it's been a learning experience and it continues to be a learning experience every day. Mm -hmm. Because as they say, the practice of medicine keeps evolving, it keeps changing, it's a moving target. Yeah. And then practicing here is a, uh, is, should I say, is a sort of continuing education. You remain a student for life yeah. if you must keep up with the way the practice of medicine, the knowledge is expanding, the use of technology mm -hmm. and everything is coming up. You just have to keep on with it or in no time you find your patients asking you questions that you can you don't have an answer to. So you have to be on the game, on the ball, all the time. Yes. Now, the training that you got in Nigeria, I'm just trying to relate that with um, your practice here in the United States. When you got to America, for instance, did you have to go through any other uh, formal training or what you practice here, is it largely informed by the training you got from Nigeria? It doesn't matter where one has trained and what accolades or degrees you've gathered from around the world. The United, once you step into the United States, that's it. You cannot practice here. 
you just have to go through the training. You have to be retrained in the United States. So you don't just jump into practicing here. So the knowledge, you must update your knowledge here before you can practice here. And was it difficult getting certified? You, you've, you've read out the processes, but I mean, professionally, academically, mm -hmm. going through all those examinations, was it difficult getting certified? Well, no. Well, should I say no or should I say yes? It's either way. <laughs> it's, yeah. You have to pass the examinations. Mm -hmm. um, you know why I ask the question? I mean, it, it, it's not the, the level of training in Nigeria is at the time you arrived in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Yes, forget. Infrastructurally, you don't want to compare the two sides. But I'm just looking at the kind of training that our people got at that time. How does it measure? I mean, getting here, you had to go through other steps of, of course, even in Nigeria, there are so many professions who don't just come into Nigeria and begin to practice. Wh what I'm looking at is, okay, yes, you were migrating from Nigeria, you were already practicing medicine, and you got here, you were asked to do some other exams. W your encounter, if you compare it with the training you got from the University of Nigeria, was it anything so different? Yes, it was different. Okay. The knowledge here was current. Okay. The knowledge I had in Nigeria was stale. A lot of things we were, we were using in Nigeria by way of medication, mm. you cannot use them here. Okay. It's a lot of standardization, it's a lot of risk you cannot take here easily. I, I know the <laughs> I'm just trying to get to, to, to somewhere, uh, because I know that in U.S., for instance, sure. if I have a headache, mm -hmm. you're most likely going to ask me to take aspirin, all right? No. Uh, well, I'm just giving an instance. Okay. Um, as a layman, okay. I'm not talking professionally as a medical practitioner, but as a layman, if I say I have a headache, for instance, the next thing somebody is going to ask me is go get some aspirin then back home in nigeria if i complain of headache someone is going to ask me go get paracetamol so i'm just wondering is it a case of okay this is the kind of medication that is popular in this area and this other one is more popular in the other area yet they are doing similar things but I'm just trying to get at something. I, I, I know why I'm asking this question because I, I, I just want to understand what makes it easy for Nigerians, you know, to travel abroad and excel and even become the best. Okay. Now let me pick on from their knowledge. Mm -hmm. Medications here there is standardization of medications. Okay. Now, what you use, a lot of medications we use in Nigeria, I cannot, you, you won't even see them on the shelves here. You okay. won't see them on the books here because they are not allowed into this country. Okay, is okay. it a case now, of this medication not working for a particular race? Or because while you were in Nigeria, I'm mm -hmm. sure you used those medications and of course they worked. So why is it that they are not allowed here? Is it that those medications are no longer good for use or? Okay. Now this becomes a case, uh, a case of standards. Okay. You know chloramphenicol, correct? Mm, yeah, sure I do. It's, they use it for typhoid. That, that was the first medication I used for typhoid fever. Do you know that medication, you cannot bring it into the United States? They no longer use it in Nigeria, I think. So they can't bring it in here. No Recently, there is a new me a medication which I understood was just being flouted for malaria. Mm. And um, someone from Nigeria who took it came in here. We researched it. Mm. That was Frank Poison. Wow. It wasn't even found in the United States books. Mm -hmm. I had to go into the internet to download it. Okay. And so that this was Frank Poison. Wow. So such medications cannot come in here. So once you start practicing here, the basic knowledge is there. The schools there will give the basic knowledge, depending on who wants to study, who wants to understand, who wants to read. Mm -hmm. Well, within the past uh, 10, 11 minutes, I have been uh, chatting with uh, Dr. George um, Ego Suala, a Nigerian trained physician practicing in the United States of America. 
And of course, he's tried to analyze the difference between practice in Nigeria and practice in the United States of America. But at this point, we must take a break. Please don't go anywhere. We will be back. You're welcome back. You're still watching a chat to the professional. Before we went for the short break, uh, my guest, Dr. George Ego Oswala, had tried to, um, of course, give an overview of his experience practicing in the United States of America. And um, what we have, at, uh, we have tried to, or I have tried to avoid, is comparing infrastructure, you know, in both ends. But at the same time, we must get to the basics of standards. And that's where we were, uh, Dr. Suala. Now, you talked about standards in medication, um, and of course a little bit of standards in general practice. What do you think we are getting wrong in Nigeria, and Africa as a whole, that in your mind, if we try a turnaround, could uplift our health services? I, I think I will talk about Nigeria. Okay. Uh, I don't know what happens in other parts of uh, Africa. Africa. Mm. Um, there's a lot we have to uh, try. First and foremost, we have to reorientate ourselves re-educate ourselves and then for those who are rendering care talking about the doctors, the nurses at graduation we swore to the, Hippocra to the Hippocratic Oath that our life will be dedicated to our patients okay. the care of our patients will be our primary concern and in no way shall we ever try to harm our patients. The practice of medicine is a calling. Okay. It's not a money making, making venture. Not a business. Once you are in medicine, you will live well. But if we have that at the back of our minds, that then will gradually flow it, it will be a trickle, it will have a trickle down effect. It will go down to the type of medications we use. It will go down to the time we give to our patients. It will go down to caring, empathizing with the patients. And that, what I say, is the broad outline of everything. This mm -hmm. has its ramifications, mm -hmm. which, if we begin to get into it, is a whole lot. I'm just wondering, 
as a Nigerian or as a Nigerian medical practitioner in the US have you in any way sent either a memo or made a visit be it to the Minister of Health or any of the institutions i.e. your own alma mater, the University of Nigeria on how best you think things can be done to ensure that they churn out quality medical doctors. I mean, that's the school that gave you the primary training. Have you done anything in that direction? That's a very, that gives me an opportunity to say something. Thank you. <laughs> Have I tried to get back to the University of Nigeria? Yes. Okay. I, the fastest way of communication these days happens to be the text, internet, yeah. email. On a number of occasions, I tried to get in touch with the Dean of Medicine. Okay. I wanted to come and talk on diabetes. Mm. That was after I, I experienced an uncomfortable situation in Oweri, Okay. in a doctor's clinic. Mm -hmm. I happened to have gone through what the doctor was using, how he was handling a case of diabetes and I wasn't comfortable with it. So I decided, let me just go and give a talk. Mm -hmm. What is happening out here? Those emails on three occasions, I didn't get any response, any reply. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm talking about um, what we're trying over there. I will say is that I am one of the 15 doctors who sat with the governor of Anna of Imo State, mm -hmm. at mm. and we planned how that to was run then. the former was, governor of Imo. State. Former governor, mm -hmm. how to run the Imo uh, teaching hospital. This one mm -hmm. in Alo. Okay. We agreed that we would take turns to come in, do rounds, teach the students, the medical students pro bono. All we wanted was a quarter where we would stay, mm -hmm. access, the mobility, a driver and a car, mm -hmm. and feeding. Don't pay us. Okay. All of us who participated in that, in that uh, discussion which lasted that day from 5 a.m. till 3, 5 p.m. till 3 a.m., none of us knew when the hospital was commissioned. No, of course, was commissioned. Was to be informed. So you see, it's like knocking on wood. So what we do is when we see Nigerian trained doctors coming out here, anyone who comes to us, we help. This is how it is done. This is where we are this, at this age and time. This is much we can do. Well, um, Dr. Swala, I think. That is not encouraging, but I'll tell you something. A chat to the professional debuted on television on November 7, 2000. That's about 12 years now running. And we are not for passion. I can assure you that this program would long have been rested. I've put in everything I've got, all my savings, all incomes from other sources to ensure that this program runs. I am seated here with you discussing on this show purely and 100% funded by Blue Rose Media and Martin Sobu. All the way from Nigeria with a three-man crew to the United States. A lot of times I've gotten this kind of discouraging words from Nigerian professionals abroad and what I say is it's like corruption when you fight corruption it fights you back whenever you try to do the right thing be sure to get opposition and resistance but you don't give up if you've tried the state I will encourage you to try the federal government I am saying this because east or west they say home is the best I am aware that in the US, in fact, the United States medical system is largely sustained by Nigerian medical practitioners, doctors and nurses. 
And that's why I'm worried that if we are doing marvelously well here, everywhere I've gone, all the states I've traveled to, what I hear is that Nigerian nurses are the best. Same goes with Nigerian medical doctors. So how come we're having this kind of challenge back home? Yes, infrastructurally, we may not measure up with the United States. Not in any way. But in terms of service delivery, what is it that Nigerians at home are not getting right? And why is it that when, even after practicing in Nigeria, you move out to the United States, you become a superstar? We shouldn't be discouraged, but outside that, I am aware that you are setting up some clinics in Nigeria with all the challenges. What do you think you'll be, you'll be, you'll be bringing into Nigeria that is different from what, what we are seeing? Because essentially, you are still going to be working with Nigerian doctors. Right. Well, let me take on uh, That's a very good one. And uh, I like the way you've put it. You've shown how concerned you are based on what you've heard from other people, not me. Mm. You see, when we thread cautiously when we're coming to Nigeria. Mm. Because when one starts talking to fellow colleagues, there is that feeling of threat. So the answer is to shy away and pull away. Well, Dr. Swala, I, 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 I like you to comment on the briefly because time is no longer on our side. Uh, I need you to talk about um, uh, the clinics you're setting up. What, what do you intend to be doing differently? Uh, I'm concerned, really. Actually, as you rightly, I don't know how you got by the, that information. I'm setting up um, a clinic in uh, Nigeria to be specific in, in Oweri. Your question was, uh, what am I going to do differently, or mm -hmm. what am I going to do there? Yeah. Uh, well, hospitals are supposed to run 24 hours a day, mm. and that's one of my objectives. Okay. has to be run 24 hours a day. Hospitals should not really be a place where you come in, see the doctor, or the place you come in, there's an emergency, we start going for the doctor at his home. Here the doctor has to be on site. Right. If you don't believe, if a doctor is said any caregiver does not believe in what I believe, that the patient comes first, that person will not be my kind of person. Um, I would just like you to briefly offer an advice to the federal government. Do not go to states now because I'm sure that if we get it right at the top, of course, the states can only replicate. So what would be your advice to effective health care delivery? Effective health care delivery in Nigeria should be patient-centered. Okay. There is a decree or an act, mm -hmm. it's not an now act, mm -hmm. which was set up when, um, when uh, the professional practice decree was abrogated. Mm -hmm. And that didn't do the health care system in Nigeria any good. Okay. I wish they reinstated that professional practice decree whereby any profession, mm -hmm. any professional who finishes training must be under pupillage for five years okay. before he or she can op set up a practice. That would be first. Number two, the running of healthcare institutions. Mm -hmm. I am a physician. Mm -hmm. I'm a doctor. But in Nigeria there is an act or a law or whatever that says that Doctors must head healthcare institutions. Doctors are not good administrators. Doctors are clinicians. Okay. In every health institution, the clinical aspect, the standard of care, the protocol has mm -hmm. to be drawn by the doctors. Okay. But the day-to-day -day administration of the institution should be left to those who did health services or healthcare administration. Okay. And there is they say the feeling in Nigeria, that's going back to the public, that health care should be totally free. It is never free. Mm -hmm. The health care, uh, the, the, the insurance plans being set up should be made to work mm -hmm. so that people pay in something yeah. and then they can get health care. Mm -hmm. Essentially, I get what you're saying. Life should be sacred. 
and people, the trained professionals who are supposed to provide services in that area should do what they... I, your advice is, is highly instructive and I just hope that the Honorable Minister of Health, who of course is an ardent follower of um, uh, this program, is watching and listening to Dr. Suala. Of course, I am glad with the coming on stream of the Professional Elite Club where all guests that have featured on this show are brought into one umbrella to interface to uplift the living standard of our people. I am glad that with time, this interface might eventually materialize into achieving some of these things that we've tried to point out uh, on the show. But that's the much time would permit on the interview segment. So don't go anywhere. I'll be right back to wrap up this show. I'm afraid as the much time would permit, we hope to get Dr. Swala back on this show sometime soon uh, to talk more about the uh, health services in Nigeria. Health, provision, education, these are two critical areas that really bother me, of course, apart from economic management. But these two areas, if we get them right, I can assure you that Nigeria will be on the right path for greatness. Um, we already have a strong economic team in place. And um, we are hoping also that with the current leadership in the Federal Ministry of Health, uh, which, of course, as an individual, I truly believe in, um, I am saying this not to patronize any individual, but because of their approach towards ensuring that data is made available. Because long before now, we don't even have um, statistics that one can rely on uh, when you talk about um, health provision, what we need, what we have, what we do not have, and stuff like that. But Dr. Suala has really dealt critically, even though he tried some in, 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 in a way to dribble me, but somehow we were able to get out some um, valued information from him. We need more action. Yes, we need to talk, but this time we have to go for action. And the professional elite club has come to stay. We will do just that. Just watch what we're going to do. Till next week when I come your way, this is Martin Sobu saying stay blessed and I'll see you.